Greetings. So today I'm addressing um, an issue that I've got with my scalp. This kind of started the last couple of years I drove it as a daily driver vehicle. So back in the late 90s, um, started to get to where I wasn't registering a good oil pressure on the gauge. Now that's using the stock gauge of the dash, which is not a good indicator. So I put a mechanical gauge in it at the time. And it confirmed kind of what I was seeing with the with the gauge and the dash. Good oil pressure when you first start it. As it comes up to temperature, it kind of starts to drop. And as the oil really gets heated up, it's, it really drops down almost to a point where nothing registers on the gauge. Now back then I found that um, there was a couple things I could do to help it. I started using 2050 oil in it. And uh, back then, Wix listed a different oil filter for this Scout than what they do today. Today they list the 51515, which I believe is just like a the common FL1A, uh, PH1A, you know, that, that real common um, filter. But uh, back in the 90s, they listed something completely different for this. When you looked it up in the parts catalog, they had a different number. Um, I don't remember what that number was. I wish I did because um, I, I noticed a difference. Whenever I would run that filter, um, I would put 2050 oil in it and I would put an additive, a, a small bottle of some sort of additive with the, the extra stuff that these things need, particularly zinc. Um, and so then I would even at idle hot, I'd show, you know, six or seven pounds roughly, you know, just guessing by what it shows on the gauge, but the gauge would register something. Even back then, if I used like the, any type of, any other type of oil filter, um, pretty much when it's hot uh, at idle, the, the needle is all the way down. Essentially, the reason why this is important is because I'm trying to prepare to take this on a semi cross country trip long distance I don't want to have to put it on a trailer I'd love to drive this thing on this trip uh, as we relocate it um, but I just I don't want to break down either so uh, the reason why I'm concerned is um, not so much the oil pressure gauge if you do your research and I've read so many articles online and in the forums and such and it's it's kind of accepted that these are low pressure high volume engine as in regards to the oil so long as you have 10 pounds per uh, 1000 rpm then you're good to go and i've got that i mean it, i can if i if i rev it up if i rev it up to 1000 rpm i've got about 20 somewhere between 20 and 25 psi so i'm good i'm within spec there the thing that worries me is that i do have some kind of um, intermittent engine noise it sounds like rockers maybe lifters something um, but it, it just it kind of comes and goes especially as the engine starts to warm up from about once it hits about 100 degrees to about 150 degrees you hear it a lot as it gets full temp it, it pretty much goes away it just kind of comes and goes every now and then so my suspicion is that uh, the cam bearings are not any good uh, these engines use cam bearing two and four i believe it is to oil each side of the uh, the rocker assemblies whenever i put the heads back on this after putting the head kit in it i did rotate the engine and uh, made sure that both sides were oiling they won't oil at the same time so you have to rotate the engine until you find one um, make sure you get oil coming out rotate it till you get oil coming out the other side so um, they were both oiling when I put it back together so I, I know that the engine needs to be rebuilt um, it really doesn't have that many miles on it but I think it's just it's got a cam bearing failure so um, it needs to be redone and that's that's the plan once we get it relocated I don't have time to do it here and um, so I think what I'm going to do is we'll start it up and we'll let it heat up. I'll try and capture some of these sounds and such, but 
anything kind of show you what the oil pressure does as the temperature comes up and um, so in the next video what I'll do is I'm going to take the valve covers off and we'll, we'll run the engine with the valve cover off and um, as long as it doesn't make a huge mess I don't think it should the main thing is um, even if we have to uh, run it with the valve covers on then take the valve covers off but the main thing is I want to make sure that everything is getting properly oiled along the rocker assembly make sure that none of them are dry um, because I think that's what I'm hearing I don't know I, I'm trying to uh, diagnose based on you know what type of engine noise can just kind of come and go you know if there's a rod or like that it would be constantly making noise um, but this this kind of clearly just it, it comes and then it'll just absolutely go away so makes me think it's a, a lifter something in the lifters or uh, rocker assembly so I'll get it started up and get it warmed up and um, show you what happens and um, See, we're up to 109. Already starting to drop some. Started out at 50 cold, just under 50 cold. comes and goes, it stops, it starts.
that I wouldn't be concerned about, really, truthfully. It's the noise that comes and goes that bothers me. Let's see, this one's dropped.